Turns out, Grandpa only left me the farm as a way to dump a bad investment that he made during the NFT craze a few years ago. He's not even dead. Now, I'm the brand new owner of Sheepalot Farm, and the 100,000 gold loan that comes along with it. And oh my goodness, is this a restrictive loan. I can only profit from selling sheep byproducts, I have to repay 10,000 gold off the loan between the purchase of any additional sheep, and if I don't pay it back in three years, Joja will be given the rights to my land. I think they want to build some kind of enormous petting zoo? Let's see if we can overcome Grandpa's terrible impulses and pay off this loan before we're stuck working admissions to our own property. This video started as a stream, so I want you all to know that I didn't name these sheep. That said, I started my journey with Sean the Sheep, which is apparently a spin-off of Wallace and Gromit. Today I learned. The only reason I could afford Sean here is because we have a huge loan to pay off. Fortunately, we'll have some time to take care of this. Sean is cute, right? But it's gonna take Sean a few days to grow up, and even when he does, he's still gonna only make us a few hundred gold every three days. That's not very good. So basically, Sean is cute, but not very helpful. Just like the sponsor of today's video, you. Yeah, you, behind the screen. And as the sponsor for today's video, you're contractually obligated to post your favorite sheep name in the comments to help with the algorithm. Thanks. As Sean and I settled into our new home, I wondered to myself whether this was worth it. I could probably default on my loan and simply walk away. But now that Sean was here, I felt like I couldn't just go. What? Just leave my only friend in the world to be part of a Joja-run petting zoo? I worked for Joja, and I know they don't have anyone who can handle hoofstock. So I buckled down and decided to get to work. The first goal was to clear out some space in front of the farm. Sean is going to need to eat the grass, sure, but I don't want his beautiful wool to snag on a stray branch or anything, you know? We're barely going to be scraping by as it is. I chopped down some wood, cleaned up some rocks, and cut away lots of weeds and grass, which I shouldn't have because that's his food, but whatever, it'll grow back. The other nice thing about all this wood cutting is that I'm getting a feel for the trees. I can tell there's something inside them just waiting to get out. I haven't cracked it yet, but oh, when I do, there's black gold in those trees. In game terms, I need to get to level 3 foraging to get some tappers rolling. We'll need pine tar to make looms so we can turn all wool into cloth. But to make tappers, we're going to need copper, which meant on the 5th of spring, I left Sean alone on the farm for the first time. Oh wait, before that, some random lady I've never met before showed up on my doorstep, called me by my name, and guilted me into adopting a dog. I tried to name it Sheep1, but my animation cancelling was on, so instead he's Sheeper! Exclamation point. So technically Sean wasn't completely alone, he had a brand new feral dog that we've only known for 20 minutes here to take care of him. Hope I don't die in the mines and leave them both to forage for themselves or Sheeper is gonna eat well. After that I found myself in the mines, all alone while my two animal friends were probably bonding. The mines were a terrible place for me. I hadn't started a new save file in like a long time and it was a struggle bus trying to even fight slimes. I'm a professional Stardew Valley player by the way. I fled from the slimes anyway, further into the depths, hoping to strike it rich and find a huge vein of copper. I didn't. But on the bright side, everyone was alive when I got back home. Yay! I felt a bit of separation anxiety after spending a whole day in the mines, so I didn't leave the farm for the next couple of days, and on the 7th, I was rewarded with my very first bundle? Bale? I'm not really sure what the correct units of measurement are for wool at a hobby farm level. Either way, I chucked that into the bin and earned a cool 340 gold. Oh my goodness, this was going to take forever. Well, Sean and I grew ever closer over the next several weeks. In the mornings, I would go pet him and shear wool when he had it, and 10 minutes after that, I would go to sleep for the day. Sometimes I would leave him in the barn alone for a couple days since his wool didn't grow back every day. It is important for a family to have private spaces, after all. Amazingly, by the end of spring, I had managed to reach farming level 1. Honestly, I wasn't sure if Sean and I were going to be able to pay off the debts my grandfather had saddled me with. We were going to need some help. After months, literally months, of saving up, I managed to add a new member to the family on fall 20th, year 1. Dolly joined us on the farm that day, and things would never be the same. Dolly was a good sheep. She was no Sean, of course, but at least Sean and Dolly could hang out with each other during the two to three days that I spent hibernating after each wool harvest. On fall 25th, for the first time, I harvested two servings of wool. Servings, yes. Per the rules I made up after breaking the mod within five minutes of starting the stream. And let's see if our wages got garnished or if I'm gonna just close down the stream and go cry in the shower. It didn't work. <laughs> No! I had to pay back 10,000 gold of the loan before I could add another sheep to the farm, but that was fine. Things were only going to go up from here. As Sean and Dolly slowly grew closer to me, they were producing higher quality wools. Plus, just having two sheep was incredibly helpful. I returned to my woolly hermit ways for the next few weeks, emerging from my farm on winter 11th to finally construct a silo for my poor sheep. It was the first human interaction I'd initiated with anyone other than Marnie for the entire run, and I could barely croak out the words I needed after only speaking in bahs for the past three months. But I did my best. I couldn't bear the thought of them going unfed after all. 
It was also at this point that chat started telling me that I needed to buy a heater for the sheep. But alas, we just don't have the money. We trudged on through winter until eventually spring sprung, and on the 9th of spring, I was able to pay down 10,000 gold on my loan. I had to do this in 1,000 gold increments, which was really annoying, but that's okay. Now we could raise funds for a new family member. This time, it only took until early summer to expand the barn's membership. Barbara joined the team, and while I will always appreciate her contributions, I'll admit that she was my least favorite of the sheep. It was pretty cute to see them all lined up eating grass together, though. But there was something that changed when she joined the farm. Sean stopped seeing me as the leader, and instead it seemed he had designs of his own upon my land. I would have to keep an eye on him. Summer lapsed into fall, and the chilly air reminded me that we had passed the halfway point to failure, and had only paid down one-tenth of the loan. But on the bright side, on day 12 of fall, I was able to pay down another 10,000 gold of my loan. That brought me to one-fifth, which is still not great. But sheep ownership, like polyhedral dice addictions, are a compounding effort, and before the end of the month, we added another sheep to the family. Wool a lot. Again, these names are from chat, leave me alone. Merely petting Woolalot's brainless head had improved my farming to level 5 that morning, so I headed into the mines for more copper to turn into tappers. I would need to achieve level 7 farming before I could make looms, but there was no time like the present to prepare. Especially since I could tell the sheep were up to something at this point. They now outnumbered me 4 to 1, and I was worried about Sean's growing complaints about his rights as the individual whose efforts paid our bills. The sheep were stuck in the barn for winter though, and on the 15th I was able to pay down another 10,000 gold on the loan, which was great but I was starting to get more and more nervous about both bill collectors and the growing discontent in my barn. I refused to cave into demands for a heater this winter, hoping to maintain some semblance of control over the situation. On spring one, year three, Grandpa's ghost told me he'd been there the whole time. I honestly thought he was in Milan. He said the farm hadn't changed much, but he was glad I was enjoying life. What a joke. Well, I had enough money that same morning to buy another sheep. This time it was Beep. Beep the sheep was a soothing presence on the farm. All the discontent seemed to fade away when we added her to the fold. And so it was that only a week and a half later, I was able to pay down another tenth of my debt. I was near the halfway point financially, but I only had three and a half months left. But honestly, I was feeling pretty okay. Especially when I had enough money a week later to add another sheep to the farm. This one was Steven, named after a viewer who donated to force my hand and make me buy a heater. And I bought the heater all right. I put it right in my house to keep me warm. On the 25th, I paid down another 10,000 gold, and I could see the light at the end of the tunnel. I was picking up speed, and nothing could stop me now. Only a week later, I had enough cash on hand to add another sheep to the flock, Husky Puppy 26. This one was actually my idea. I was on top of the world, though. On the 8th of summer, I was down to 40,000 gold, and beat the sheep's soothing presence had stamped out all of Sean's ravings. Our friendship was ruined, of course, but we were still business partners here. And it was about this time that the true hero of the story emerged. On the night of the 12th, Dolly gave birth to a baby sheep, Jolene. I didn't get this reference until Chad explained it, but apparently they're rivals in love. Which is kind of weird in this situation, since they're related, but whatever. At least Dolly, the second most senior sheep on the farm, was on my side. The very next day, I even had enough money to buy Shearly. I probably didn't need to at this point, and I decided also at this point that I wouldn't buy any more sheep. And honestly, Chad was starting to get a little weird about licking jokes anyway. But my plans were foiled on the 28th of summer when Dolly gave birth again. Only 15 days later, jeez Dolly. Well, a slave to the whims of chat, I named this sheep John Lick, which I honestly can't even begin to explain in a video, but this was a terrible mistake. The sheep sensed my weakness. They began to plot anew. Every morning when I entered the barn, they would look at me with their beady little eyes. I had been hoarding the wool though, the precious wool. I never even hit farming seven by the way, so the looms didn't come into play. Before the sheep could try to overthrow me, I enacted my own plan. On fall third, I sold the last of the wool I needed to overcome my debts. Then I locked the door to the barn. The sheep might think they're smart, but they don't have opposable thumbs. The next morning, after being trapped outside overnight, they were weakened and easy prey. I paid down the rest of my loans and then I pounced. I started with Husky Puppy 26, then John Lick. None of them stood a chance. Sweet Precious Beep was next, and then Bah Regard, the instigator that turned Sean against me. Wool a lot, Steven, Shearly, even my oldest companion, Sean, had to go. He had poisoned them against me. Jolene was next, and then there was only one, Dolly. Could I do this? After everything she'd done for me? It was clear she wasn't on Sean's side, only, was it? Could I really be sure? Could I ever really be sure?